I'm Justin Mott, wannabe cyclist, professional photographer, and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. My channel is dedicated to all things cycling from the perspective of a below average cyclist. And today I'm gonna to talk about bib shorts or bib tights, depending on the weather and your location. And while bib shorts are great for all levels of riders and all sizes of riders, today I'm gonna to talk about specifically why bib shorts are great for larger riders or riders like me carrying a little bit of extra weight around this area here. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, stay tuned to find out why you should be buying bib shorts rather than regular waist shorts. If you're new to cycling, you've probably, someone's told you, right, like get a pair of bike shorts. I'm sure that's one of the first things they said at the bike shop or the first thing one of your buddies told you on a ride is get a pair of bike shorts. That's sort of the first purchase people make after they buy their bike, right, is cycling clothing. And when I started getting back into cycling again last year, I used to cycle a lot in my 20s, tipping the scales at 109 kilos. That's big, and it's definitely big for my frame. Now about a year later, I'm in the low 90s, but I'm still sausagey, I'm still carrying extra weight. I still don't feel that like confident or just wearing cycling clothes because it's tight, but, but it's meant to be. Tight is comfort in cycling. Tight is, yes, it's more aero, but it's also more comfortable. It keeps everything in place. So your first jump, if you haven't made that already, is to, is to make sure you get cycling clothing. If, if you're putting in more than an hour on a ride, like get, get a pair of cycling shorts. And you're probably gonna be tempted just to get a cheap pair of bike shorts from your local bike shop, right? And just get a pair of normal waistline shorts. That's what these are here. Just like a regular pair of waistline bike shorts here. You've got your chamois on the inside here, this pad here, it kind of keeps your butt protected, keeps your crotch, keeps everything in place right here. And they're, they're very, very tight on you. They fit very tight. So I'm gonna tell you why you should skip that step. Get rid of these and start right with these here, which are bib shorts, but also they make bib tight, which are basically the same thing, but they go all the way down your legs and cover your calves and your full leg and bib sh shorts just cover your thigh. So, I'll, for the rest of the for the rest of the episode, I'm just going to call these bib shorts. Now these can be really intimidating because they just kind of look silly. They look like an outfit. They look something like the, for like a really serious rider, right? Like someone that's like a oh, pro level, really fit. If you go onto any of the major brand websites, you go on like Rafa or Castelli or ASOS, you see like all the riders that's usually like wearing the bib shorts, and you know because they're trying to show the full product and they have like no shirt underneath and they're like really skinny and really fit. You don't see too many like bib short models with like extra stuff going on like I have going on here. But the reason they're perfect for, again, all riders, but the reason they're exceptional for larger riders is that they keep everything in place. So now your traditional bike shorts, like I showed you before, they're gonna sit below your waist a little bit. So your gut's gonna like kind of go over or you could rest them on top of your gut, but you're gonna be playing that game where they're like flopping back and forth. And then you're also playing that cat and mouse game, that Sophie's Choice game of like you leaning forward, you're showing the butt crack. You're putting your hands up a little bit or you're going a little bit higher, or you're getting off the bike to reach for something, you're showing the gut. And if you have a long torso like me, every time you kind of maneuver a little bit, like it's a gut reveal and it's, it's, and it's embarrassing. Obviously the long-term fix is to lose some weight and get better shape, but, but in the short term, don't, don't think of them as something just for serious riders. They're great for, for everyone. And comfort is so important in riding. To comfort on the saddle, comfort in those long hours, but also just comfortable with yourself. Comfortable putting these clothes out there, not being self-conscious. So let me explain the main difference between the two. So they both have the chamois. They both are gonna have that nice pad inside and keep your butt comfortable. They're both made out of Lycra, so everything's gonna be tight. The difference is with these is that it's a frictionless waist here. So there's no elastic band around your waist. You're not going to get any of that irritation around your waist. You're not going to have to play that game of like where the waistline is. Is it on your gut, below your gut? And you don't have to worry about a butt, your butt crack showing either because these are all held in place by suspenders here. They're all held in place by these straps right here. And that really just keeps everything in place. So now traditional bike shorts, and while they're okay, um, when you're riding a bit, things are gonna move around a little bit, especially again, with larger riders. Like you're gonna move around a little bit, you're gonna have to do like some crotch adjustments, that kind of stuff. When you wear bib shorts, you don't have to worry about that. Everything is really kept in place and everything is super comfortable. So in addition, well, so I mentioned about that frictionless waist here. Again, no, again, it's elastic, but it's not a tight elastic here because everything is being secured right here on your shoulders. Now you can wear these under a base layer or on top of a base layer like I have here. A lot of people, when you go on those clothing websites or you see bib shorts, you know, it's a person like with no shirt on. So that's why it's like kind of intimidating. It's like, well, that, you know, that, I'm gonna look weird in that. I'm gonna look stupid in that. Like, you, yeah, you would if you like wore that out and wouldn't go out a meal, but you're never like hanging out wearing your straps and no shirt on underneath, really. I mean, yeah, maybe at home when you're getting dressed, so you might have to go through that embarrassment with your family, but 
that will quickly go away. You're gonna normally have, when you're out riding, you're gonna have either a base layer underneath it or if you, they can sit directly on your skin. When you do so, you're gonna have your jersey over it as well. So don't like be self-conscious about that look you see with the models online and things like that. That's not how you're gonna be seen. And they're not just for like serious and elite riders. They're for comfort and comfort's really for anyone. Comfort's for all different levels and all different sizes. And comfort, again, comfort is everything. And you're gonna be just a lot more comfortable wearing it. So in addition to that frictionless waist and everything being supported here, they also sit a lot higher on you. So these will like sit a little bit higher than your belly button and way higher than your butt crack. Unless you have like a butt crack that comes up to your neck, you'll be fine. They go up to like your lower back here. So everything is kept in place. So if you're like me and you have a long torso and a jersey fits like everywhere here, but it's like always short on you, every time you reach up, you don't have to worry about that exposure again. Everything, again, is kept in place. Then when you're in a more aero position or you're bent over more, again, everything's kept in place there. That shirt's not rising up. Or even if the shirt is rising up a little bit, you're not getting that, you're not getting that crack reveal in the back. So in addition to comfort on the saddle, you're also gonna have comfort and peace of mind, again, for larger riders especially. And Bip Shorts solved all those problems. You know, when I was riding with my traditional bike shorts, yeah, I, I was self-conscious. I wasn't comfortable. I kept thinking about that. I kept thinking about my gut when I was on the bike, off the bike. I kept thinking about my crack when I was on the bike, when I was off the bike. And then as soon as I got a pair of Bip Shorts, all those problems went away. I was much more comfortable in the saddle, much more comfortable in my mind. And I really regretted buying the bike store like standard bike shorts that sit, sit on your waist. Again, that can be fine for people, but really, if you think you're gonna get into cycling, you think you're gonna do it a lot, like just go with comfort right away. Skip that process, don't waste your money there. Now, things to look for when you're buying bib shorts, a couple different things to look for. I like premium products, so I've gone with a fancy pair here. I've got a pair of Essos, and they are expensive. This is their comfort pair, this is their GT Mille, and they're a company out of Switzerland, like really high tech, great fabrics, great material, precision, all the details are really amazing, but they're expensive. They're 130 euros a pair, or $150 for, and this is just like their baseline pair. They have like really fancy race pairs. So a couple things to look for. First is gonna be the quality of the chamois, the quality of that pad inside that's gonna keep your butt in place, that's gonna keep you comfortable on those long days in the saddle. And, and I just love this pair, but there's tons of great brands out there. I mean, right now I have a couple different pairs. I'll put a link to all those pairs that I use in the description box below. But right now I have a pair, my regular go-to everyday pair for warm weather is a pair of these Essos here, the GT Mille. I have a pair of bib tights again, which those are just basically bib shorts, but they go all the way down the legs, they're just full legs. I have a pair of, I have a warmer pair because we have a couple months out of the year in Hanoi where it does get a little bit cooler. And then I've got a pair of Rafa cargo bib shorts. So they're the same as these, they just have cargo pockets on the side for those days you're going out for a shorter ride and you just wanna put your phone in your pocket, you don't wanna carry a bike bag or something like that. But I'll say out of all the brands I've used, again, I haven't used a ton, but the ASOS have been the most comfortable. Their chamois, their whole pad system in here has just been extremely comfortable. The other brands are really nice, but with ASOS, the big difference I've noticed with them is the straps are very comfortable. The Rafas tend to bunch up a little bit. I have the pair of Rafa cargo bib shorts, like I mentioned. They bunch up a tiny bit, and the cheaper pair have bunch up a lot. So they roll and they cause a little bit of irritation here. These, I never have that problem at all. They go on, it's very simple to put on. You just basically take them over, chop them here. Again, rest above your belly here, rest above your butt crack, so no worries there. And they're just really super comfortable. And the way that Asos made these, they just sit really nicely on your shoulders. Another thing to look for, is the material that you're gonna use. And every company does it a little bit different, so you just have to read the fine details. For example, ASOS, they have three different seasons. They've got their fall pair, their summer pair, and their winter pair. Because I live in Vietnam and it's hot most of the time in Northern Vietnam, I have most of their summer lineup for base layers, for shorts, socks, and things like that. And then you have a company like Castelli, which will actually put temperatures in. I just bought my first pair of Castellis recently, the bib tights, and, and they are amazing. Actually, the same with the strap. It's extremely comfortable, and chamois is extremely comfortable as well. But again, there's so many good brands out there. You just have to do a little bit of research. So depending on the location, depending on the type of riding you're doing, just check out the temperature and check out the materials. Again, most of the big companies, most of the more expensive, more premium companies will have different clothing for different temperatures. So just do a little research and buy based on the type of riding you're gonna be doing. Now, how many pairs you need to buy, that's gonna really depend on how much riding you do and how much laundry you like to do. Uh, if you're just riding a couple days a week and you don't mind doing laundry in between, you could just get one or two pairs and get away with it. If you're riding a little bit more and you're a little bit lazy with laundry, then maybe you go with two or three pairs. What I would recommend is try a pair or two out, go on a bunch of rides, make sure you're comfortable in them, make sure you like them. And then once you find a perfect pair that you like, like I have with these ASOS here, just buy a couple pairs. Because you're always gonna reach for your best pair and you're always gonna regret when you wear the other pair. Once you've reached that level of comfort, then you're not gonna wanna go back. Now there's also options to save money. So if you work, if you live in different climates or live in an area that has different seasons and you don't wanna go with like a pair of bib shorts and a pair of bib tights, or you don't wanna buy like one pair for every different season, 
The other option is you can get a pair of bib shorts like I have here and then just buy leg warmers, basically just extensions that they're, bas they're basically just extensions. They fold up really small. They could fit in your jersey pocket if you're going from a ride from warm weather to cold weather up in the mountains. Uh, they also make different types of leg warmers. So if you're interested in UV protection like I am, but you're still in a hot climate, so you don't want your legs to be too warm, they make ones that are a little bit thinner and they're just there to protect you from UV. Or if you go into cold weather climates, then they make ones that are made from reno wool or other materials that are more insulated. You can turn like one pair of bib shorts into like three different pairs. You can have like two pairs of bib tights, a pair of bib shorts, all from one pair of bib shorts, and a couple leg warmers, and you'll save money rather than buying three total pairs. So a few pros and cons. I've mentioned all the, I've mentioned all the pros. They're going to be a lot more comfortable for all riders. They're going to be a lot more comfortable. Again, peace of mind for larger riders like me that don't want to reveal stuff, keep everything really tight. A couple cons are going to be a little bit more expensive than traditional waistline bike shorts or just traditional bike shorts, just because it's just more material, but not, not excessive. It's not a ton more. It's usually just a little bit more. And then the other thing, it's not really a huge deal, depending on how often you go to the bathroom. It's a little bit more cumbersome to use the bathroom. Like with bike shorts, you kind of, if you're taking a leak on the side of the road, if you're a man, you're taking a leak, you, you kind of just pull down and do the leak. Uh, if you're going number two, then you just pull them down like normal shorts. It's not a big deal. With, with bib shorts, you've got to like undress a little bit, take these off and, and do your number two. I'm not going to demonstrate how that works because I don't think anyone needs to see that. And then as far as going number one on the side of the road, it's 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 not that difficult. It's just slightly more of an, like more of an up and over move. You, it's not hard at all. You get used to it. Everything else is well worth it to invest in these. So I know right when you get started with cycling, it's tempting to not get bike shorts. Definitely get bike shorts right away. You're gonna love it. You're gonna be happy that you did, but, but skip the traditional bike shorts. Go the bib shorts. I know they look pro. They can be intimidating. You can feel a little bit self-conscious putting them on because they're gonna look funny. But again, nobody's gonna see you in them, family. And the first time they'll laugh and then it's done. Maybe the second time they'll laugh too if you look like me, but then then you're done. Then you're done with that. No one has to see it. You're not going out for coffee. At least most of us aren't with like your strategy on and no shirt on underneath and just hanging out and going out for dinner. So don't be self-conscious of it. Again, it's going to make you feel happier. Everything's going to be more secure, but mainly it's just peace of mind and comfort. At the end of the day, they're way more comfortable than traditional bike shorts. And they're not just for pros. They're not just for elite riders. They're not just for skinny people. They're for everyone. So, you know, if you're a larger rider, don't be intimidated by all that stuff. Start off right. Start off with a pair of bib shorts. Trust me, it'll be comfortable whether you go with a premium pair or not. I'm going to recommend going with a premium pair if you have a budget just because just because why not? I mean, it's like that comfort is everything to me. Spend on that rather than anything else, all the other stuff you're gonna buy. Start with comfort first and you'll be a happier rider and you're gonna wanna ride more and what's better than that? So that's my case for buying bib shorts over traditional waist shorts. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and don't forget to have a wonderful ride.